Welcome back to the Bentonville Beacon Podcast, where we're sharing stories and advice from the leaders behind the meteoric rise of Bentonville, one of the fastest growing and most dynamic cities in the United States, nestled in the Ozark Mountains of Northwest Arkansas in America's heartland. Hi, I'm James, and I'm your host uh, today, and I'm thrilled to share the studio with Jessica Head, Marketing Director at Endeavor Northwest Arkansas. Uh, Endeavor is a global organization helping high-impact entrepreneurs scale their businesses to transform economies. Endeavor has offices in about 35 countries worldwide, including one here in Bentonville, serving Northwest Arkansas and our surrounding region. We're so lucky to have Endeavor Northwest Arkansas as part of our entrepreneurial support community. So Jessica, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, James. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So let's get started with one of my favorite questions, which is, Tell us, tell our audience about yourself and how it came to be that you made your way to Endeavor, Northwest Arkansas, and Bentonville. Yeah, so um, it's a little bit of a colored story. Uh, I uh, actually originally went to uh, university in, in Arkansas. So I, I went to Harding University, um, which is kind of my debut to Arkansas, the, the natural state, um, so they say. And, uh, and then graduated from there, uh, moved to Austin to join a PR firm and uh, decided, you know, I don't really know that I love politics that much. But I was around the entrepreneurial ecosystem of Austin and was introduced into a startup that was launching a really cool experiential marketing company in Dallas. And they were like, what if you came and worked for us? So I did. And uh, I didn't ask any of the questions that you should ask when you are first joining a startup. Like, mm-hmm truly nothing. I I was very ignorant kind of going into the gate there. Um, And of course, they lost some funding, as some do. And it really kind of sparked this whole idea and really passion behind ensuring that entrepreneurs and founders that are wanting to launch companies in their region, in in these regional areas that we are, and have the resources they need to scale and to retain their talent and to uh, really get the venture capital support that they need as well. And so I was, uh, I was meeting with a friend, um, catching up that I had gone to college with. She was living in Little Rock at the time and mentioned that there were some entrepreneurial support organizations in central Arkansas that were looking for support. I decided to make the move to Little Rock and subsequently became introduced to the world of Northwest Arkansas. And um, as you know, James, it is beautiful here. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. The art is incredible. It's a beautiful place. And so um, I ended up getting introduced to Janem Arcan, um, who is the managing director of the uh, Endeavor office here in the Heartland. And uh, we hit it off and I decided to join her team to help launch this initiative of having um, entrepreneurial support at scale for founders that are really kind of past that initial startup phase that are ready to, you know, embark on their next phase of growth. And so that's really what propelled me to move here and really sparked my uh, inspiration around being part of the world of entrepreneurs. Awesome. So, yeah. Such a common story. Yeah. You come to Arkansas, you move away, totally. you come back. Yes. Uh, it seems like that that happens to folks. I was never coming back to Arkansas when I left <laughs> quite some time ago. And here I am. Here you are. Uh, in the land of milk and honey. That's right. <laughs> um, will you share the story of Endeavor? And as I think about it, I, I listened to uh, an episode of Reed Hoffman's uh Masters of of uh, Scale podcast yeah. recently with uh, Linda Rotenberg. And so I feel like you have to start with her story uh, to, to frame it. So how about starting with her and sharing uh, how Endeavor was founded or why and how the organization has evolved to what it is today? Oh, man, we are going to need more than an hour to talk about that entire story. Um, but I do know the episode that you're talking about, Masters of Scale, Reed Hoffman. Reed Hoffman's actually on the global board of Endeavor and is very active in our Endeavor Catalyst uh, firm, in, investment firm that's in San Francisco. 
Um, and so we love his work and, and the content that he creates. Uh, Linda had shared a story. I believe you're thinking of episode 77, where she is talking about mm -hmm. this story of, you know, it, it was like the mid 1990s. And um, she, you know, everything in America is kind of a buzz. You know, Yahoo is happening. Netscape is happening. So everybody's super excited about this, you know, new entrepreneurial theme w within the scope of what is happening in the U.S. And at the time, she was in Latin America. And um, I believe she was actually in Buenos Aires when she was in a um, cab. And the cab driver was, a, he had an engineering degree. And so she said, oh, wow, you know, you must be one of these people that's starting a business. But she couldn't think of the word entrepreneur in Spanish at the time. So she was like, you know, like a person that's starting a business that's wanting to launch a company. And so he kept repeating the word back to her saying impresario, which in the episode, I think she talks about how she's like impresario is kind of like a word to describe someone that has like, you know, Swiss bank accounts, mm -hmm. you know, big macho dude that big businessman and um and that probably like has connections with the government in some capacity right and so she was like no 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 that's not the word this is different and then basically in this car ride she discovers that at the time there was not a word for entrepreneur in spanish and so it was really about you know kind of unveiling this whole challenge with the mindset and you know, I think when we think about places like Silicon Valley and, you know, even places like Northwest Arkansas, we all share a mythos of, you know, what we subscribe to as far mm -hmm. as what we're trying to build and inspire, you know, in, in our world. And so Linda really um, just had a big passion for, you know, launching accessibility to underserved and underrepresented communities across the world. And so subsequently today we're in 40 plus markets um, and we've continued to expand our growth over over time. And it's been really neat to see all, all of the different ecosystems and the unique offerings that they bring to the network, because as we all are connected globally, mm -hmm. we all have unique challenges, but also unique perspectives on how we can solve some of the world's biggest problems. So it's a really exciting time to be as a part of Endeavor. And I feel um, obviously inspired by Linda and the work that she's done and also just, you know, excited for the future of Endeavor and the continued connectivity that we're bridging for entrepreneurs everywhere. So really cool. Excellent. I'm glad you shared that story yeah. because I, I think it's important to understand why organizations uh, exist. Um, so uh, you have a few offices in the U.S. Can you tell me where those offices in the U.S. are located? Yes, yes, we do. So clearly we have one in Bentonville. Um, we are also in Atlanta, Detroit. Uh, we have an office in Louisville. We also have an office in Buffalo, Western New York mm -hmm. area, and Miami. Um, and then we also have an office in Denver. So it's a it's a very exciting time to kind of be in this more heartland corridor um, from the majority of our offices serving entrepreneurs that maybe don't have, you know, as much accessibility to the coast as what is perceived in other countries. I think oftentimes, you know, as we look at all of these countries that we've been part of, that we've been serving at Endeavor, it's been interesting to see how um, we've kind of in the last, I think, eight or so years have discovered a unique opportunity to address some of the challenges that are associated with the heartland and ensuring that connectivity is accessible for all the mentors at every stage of growth. And so that's really why we're here and why we serve these different regions that we do today. Excellent. You know, uh, hearing the names of these cities, they all sound a lot bigger than yeah. Northwest Arkansas, certainly uh, larger than Bentonville. And I think you gave a little bit of a hint to it just now, but why Bentonville in particular and our uh, region or sort of our close region? And I mean, why did, uh, how did Endeavor Northwest Arkansas uh, come to be? And mm -hmm. maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what you're trying to achieve here. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to. Um, you know, it's really interesting. We are a smaller office. We're probably actually the smallest office mm -hmm. um, out of all of the Endeavor offices. But um, And I think, James, you would share this um, sentiment with me, which is that 
we're small, but we're also mighty. We have a lot of really talented individuals in this region uh, as the result of so much amazing leadership at the companies that are part of our ecosystem. And I'm I'm looking at companies even outside the scope of the obvious, I think, which mm-hmm. is Walmart, um, Tyson, and J.B. Hunt. But we also have Simmons Foods. We have um, New Road Capital. We have some really unique voices that are a part of this community that have helped to champion some really interesting mentorship that can be available to entrepreneurs worldwide. And I think, you know, our board is a testimony to that. Um, They've really helped to not only support and help scale the founders that are currently in the heartland in our office, but also help to support founders that are outside of our office, maybe even in a different country at times. And so it's been a really unique way to um, really bridge the gap between putting, putting, um, the heartland on the map in a unique way and making Bentonville a part of that narrative, I think has been a really important goal in launching this office here. Um, And then subsequently in the last year, we did uh, launch a scale up program, which is a female focused accelerator program that is in um, Tulsa, Oklahoma. So, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of, I think what we talk about today as it relates to the Northwest Arkansas and our expansion of this effort is to ensure that these cities become a super region together, you know, and so expanding our um, visibility of Endeavor and the support that we provide to neighboring cities of Northwest Arkansas to ensure that we all have the connectivity and and really uh, the the talent and education cross vertically in these different uh, zip codes, if you will. Yeah, so. you bet. You know, we're so close to Tulsa in the in the scheme of things. Yeah. It feels like this region should be tighter together. And and I feel like there's been a number of things that have happened, uh, you know, in the past 12 to 18 months, endeavors, endeavor yeah. uh, into the Tulsa area, but also uh, sort of the recent announcements around a uh, beyond line of sight air mobility corridor, yep. um, a Tinto capital coming over here to uh, do some work for 12 angels. There's a lot going on there. Sure. Um, you know, a lot of folks in Tulsa, including Tulsa innovation uh, um, hub participating now in the Northwest Arkansas technology summit. Totally. There's so much going on there. I love it. Um, I want to make sure I understand exactly who, uh, Endeavor serves. Um, what does an Endeavor entrepreneur and her company look like? Are, are we talking pre-revenue, post-revenue, profitable or not? Yes. And so we are, we're dealing with uh, entrepreneurs. We, we select scale-ups. And so our entrepreneurs have found product market fit and are at an inflection point in their growth uh, journey. Most entrepreneurs in Endeavor selection process have uh, between 500K to 10 million in annual revenue. So that's something to certainly kind of think through as you're engaging with Endeavor. There is programs that we also provide to maybe entrepreneurs that are maybe a little bit earlier than that, Mm -hmm. but are wanting to engage and take advantage of our U.S. regional network. That's actually why we had launched the Scale Up program in Tulsa, because we saw that as a unique offering that we could provide to founders that are maybe a little earlier than that, Mm -hmm. but are certainly ready to scale to that level and eventually engage in our selection process. And I can talk to you a little bit more about what that means, because naturally I'm saying selection process like that just totally makes sense to everybody in the room here, but probably not. Um, (laughs) So as part of Endeavor, um, in order to become an Endeavor entrepreneur, which really just means that you have access to the entire network of Endeavor globally, we have a selection process that we put founders through. And really, that's in an effort to help prepare them for the scale and growth that they will inevitably experience at that revenue stage, right? And so part of that is building out a profile of who they are and where they're wanting to go, their business strategy and their growth plans, and then presenting those to a panel of local mentors and board members at the Heartland level um, that can help to provide feedback to them and ensure that they are ready to move on to the second part of the selection process, um, which is the international selection panel. And so really, if they've passed this, if it has to be a unanimous vote uh, with the panelists that are participating in this local selection process. Once they are unanimous, unanimously voted in, yes, 
they are able to then engage in international selection panels. And these are hosted all over the world um, annually. And it's an opportunity for the uh, the founders to kind of mingle with all other entrepreneurs that are also at that kind of stage of growth and looking to become an Endeavor entrepreneur. And I'd really kind of say it's more or less like an educational conference, but also an opportunity to be interviewed by a panel of uh, global uh, panelists at that point. And so it's a mix of mentors from all over the world that are engaging in this panel, um, there is board members that are engaged. I know our local board has attended international selection panels before and interviewed companies from all over to see if they're really ready to engage in that next step and that we can support them. Once they pass that international selection panel, they then get access to a variety of services and resources, and then they also become eligible to participate in Endeavor Catalyst, which is our fund that I was speaking to earlier. Um, so it's really a unique opportunity for these founders to really kind of, as they're engaging in a selection process, get curated mentorship and evaluation of their company, just like you would if you were, you know, creating a profile at a VC firm, mm -hmm. but without the judgment, right? Because oftentimes, you know, as you're in these rooms with these investors, you are, it's a lot of pressure, first off, it's, it's a ton of pressure. Um, and it also has to be a very curated conversation. Whereas in a room of trusted advisors that you know don't have a particular interest in your business, they can speak honestly to you about what you probably should do in order to grow and scale your company. Um, and so it becomes a very like selfless, I think, process that ensures that these founders get the trusted uh, resources that they need and the correct advice to scale, you know, to have economies of scale. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, when are we getting an international panel here? Oh, TBD. Uh, All this right. is, this is actually very exciting. We do have some announcements coming up, um, in the next couple of months that, uh, I think will be very exciting and along those lines. So stay tuned. Excellent. Yeah. See, this is why I go off script sometimes. Oh, totally. You should. <laughs> uh, uh, will you offer some examples of entrepreneurs and companies that, uh, Endeavor has served, especially here locally? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I can um, name three companies that have gone through the entire selection process and can cool. probably speak to their experience better than I, so I won't speak on their behalf. But um, Now Diagnostics, Field Agent, and Acre Trader have all passed the international selection panels and are now Endeavor entrepreneurs. Um, we also have an outliers program that Acre Trader was able to participate in uh, this past year, which is very exciting. It's curated content with some of Endeavor entrepreneurs all over the world where they get to engage in educational experiences, uh, forums, and then kind of intimate small group settings to answer some of their challenge, their challenges and questions that they have at their at their uh, stage of growth. So it's a really cool program, but there's all kinds of things at the Endeavor global level that I think really help to support the growth and scalability of a company. And it's really been cool to see, um, you know, Rick West engage in that, Mark Yunt, um, obviously uh, Carter Malloy has engaged mm -hmm. in that as well. So it's, it's really, really cool. That's, that's great. Uh, lovely companies, uh, yes. all the ones that you mentioned. Um, we talked about the selection process a moment ago. You mm -hmm. talked about that. How long does that usually take? Is it a set time period or, or, or how does that work? You know, there's some companies that are ready to go from lo local selection panel immediately to international selection panel. You know, we've, we've found them and they're ready to go. There's others that maybe need an, some additional work before. And so oftentimes what I will say is that what we've seen on trend for the U.S. at large is probably a year. Um, that these individuals will be engaging in the selection process before going to an international selection panel. It's very competitive. Um, certainly there's limited spots to get into an international selection panel on an annual cadence. And so ensuring that our entrepreneurs are ready and that we know that they will pass is priority for us. Um, and so we, we try to do our due diligence. And if that takes a, a little bit of time, it takes time. Outstanding. You know, Endeavor's... Um typical entrepreneur in their companies, I would say have already achieved a level of success where, uh, you know, especially after you cross a million where you're in elite company, it's yeah. such a tiny percentage of, of companies that achieve that level of success, but the, the scale, um, to scale 
you know, by multiple orders of revenue of employees and, and customers and so on. That takes so much more. And I take it that's exactly the space that Endeavor is playing in. Absolutely. Um, one of the areas uh, that I'm really curious to know a little bit more about is uh, Endeavor Catalyst. Uh, how does that look for a company that's in your portfolio and the access to that capital? Endeavor Catalyst is a really great resource for our entrepreneurs to engage in. Um, often what we've seen is that many of the companies that have been invested in through Catalyst have IPO'd and in um, countries that this has never happened before. So it's certainly a, a historical VC firm from that perspective. Um, and I think also, you know, it's important to note that although Catalyst is available for the Endeavor entrepreneurs who are are needing to engage in additional capital, it's certainly not the priority in becoming an Endeavor entrepreneur, right? I think mm -hmm. the the services and support that we provide is much more intangible than um, the actual capital that we would be providing to to the entrepreneurs, although that is important as well. And we certainly try to make as many connections as possible. Um, earlier, we were kind of talking about the power and, and the growth of these companies and why that's important. Yeah. You know, I think oftentimes, and, and you are very familiar with this because we have a podcast called The Multiplier Effect mm -hmm. that you've, uh, you've been on our show. Um, and, uh, but, you know, the, the meaning behind the multiplier effect is really important. So oftentimes when we're talking about, you know, economies of scale, building these teams in support of scaling companies in these regions, what this means is so much more than a founder's success, right? It's the, it's the future of making a future founder, right? And so this is really about creating an environment where we can not only build a founder and its success, but subsequently having an employee of this company become the, a founder. This is what the multiplier effect is. You know, and so I think oftentimes this kind of gets into the weeds of like, how are we maximizing talent retention in an ecosystem that is uh, is not as particularly dense as some of these other offices mm -hmm. are? I think it's really cool to see how Endeavor is enabling communities that are underserved and potentially underrepresented in creating this entrepreneurial narrative, not just with the companies that we serve today, but the companies of tomorrow and really inspiring that kind of mentality. Because again, it's kind of back to earlier how we talked about, you know, Reed Hoffman and, and, and his podcast. But when we're talking about a Silicon Valley mythos, this is about championing a concept and a theme of life. It's, it's a attitude of life and an mm. attitude of innovation. And so Oftentimes, you know, that's that's I think what the power of Endeavor really is, <laughs> is this this um, empowering mythos of anyone can be an entrepreneur anywhere and we can create economies of scale anywhere. So I just I love figured that. I'd add that. <laughs> I, yeah, I love that. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned the, the, the podcast and I love yeah. the name of it and and really the whole concept yeah. of uh, the multiplier effect. That is how you create uh, ecosystems. Um, it's not just about the founder. It's also right. about the others who will go on to found companies. Um, you know, Endeavor, I guess, opened its office here about three years ago. Mm -hmm. oh, what a time to open an office, by right. the way. Uh, <laughs> what are some of the challenges that uh, you expected to face here? And how have you been working to address those? Yeah, that, that's a great question. You know, I think kind of back to the point of certainly in this environment, we are the, our challenge is density, right? And density as it relates to talent, density as it relates to capital um, resources. And so I think that's continuing to become, uh, you know, part of what we are solving for. Um, what I will say is that in expanding to Tulsa, you know, and expanding, potentially reaching to Kansas City, reaching to neighboring cities, this is an opportunity for us to increase that density, increase accessibility to talent and increase accessibility to mentorship, right? And in industries or verticals that we may not be as privy to. You know, I know um, 
for example, Tulsa has a huge energy tech uh, environment. I actually just got through hosting a webinar earlier today uh, with Tracy Pool of 46 Venture Capital, um, and they're talking about, you know, the HALO initiative, something that oftentimes maybe not as many people in Northwest Arkansas are as familiar with, but certainly in the Tulsa ecosystem, they have a lot of opportunities to mentor around these um, themes and, and, and these verticals. And so really kind of bridging the gaps of talent, resources, and, and industry expertise is going to be really critical. And uh, that's what we're looking to do in the future. I love that. I love that you're, you're thinking about the broader region. I think about places like St. Louis, and I don't know, you know, on your map in terms of yeah. distance of Memphis, how, how close you consider Memphis, but uh, yeah. those are some areas that could certainly uh, benefit from having a connection to here and, and through Endeavor. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I imagine you mentioned earlier that each Endeavor uh, office has something unique to add uh, to the Endeavor ecosystem across the globe. Uh, what's unique about the Northwest Arkansas chapter and Bentonville and what it brings to the Endeavor family? Well, I think certainly, uh, uh, and potentially quite obviously, retail and supply chain is a huge opportunity. Uh, we we have so much expertise in this region as it relates to those uh, verticals and often have our mentors and board members engaging all over the world with entrepreneurs in their expertise around this specific topic. Um, but I think the value of Endeavor also being here is that we can also benefit from the other verticals and expertise of other regions to ensure that we have a, that diversified economy that we're aiming for. Um, so certainly, I would say that's probably what we are known for. Um, but not limited to, and Tulsa is certainly changing the narrative on that as well, uh, which is very exciting. Well, you you are uh, singing my song, Diversified <laughs> Economy, as an economic developer. That is uh, music to my ears. And of course, as you know, there are a lot of things happening right now in, in different uh, sectors, whether it's mobility or the outdoor rec space or uh, healthcare and wellness, or as I like to call it, the appropriate order, wellness and healthcare. Right. Um, how can our listeners help Endeavor and its member companies? You know, I, I think um, really promoting this opportunity, promoting opportunities for entrepreneurs to engage in the resources that we have. Um, I think, you know, really just visibility, even being on this podcast, anytime that we're able to share the resources that we have available and to ensure that the right entrepreneurs are being pointed to us, send them our way, you know. You bet. Uh, you know, if an audience member wants to learn more or, or even jump in as, as a mentor, how do they go about doing that? Reach out to us. Um, they can definitely go to endeavornwa.org. We have um, a form that you can fill out to uh, inquire about mentorship opportunities. And we have several different events throughout the year that you can attend. Uh, definitely keep in touch with us and, and we will connect with you and, and find an opportunity for you to help support. Yeah. All right. Well, let's switch things up a little bit as we start rolling into the end yeah. uh, of, of this uh, episode. Um, what's the biggest mistake that entrepreneurs make in scaling up and what should they do instead? Well, I've heard a lot of challenges <laughs> over the years, but I think I'll stick with one that I personally experienced at that startup, um, which is not engaging with these types of programs early enough. I don't think that there is a early enough time that you can start connecting with some of the different entrepreneurial support organizations that, especially to the in this region, where we have so many that are curated to target very specific points of your business, you know, whether it's pre-revenue, whether you don't even have an idea yet, you're trying to form an idea. There's so many different resources out there. I would say engage in that because that mentorship and advisory is going to potentially change the trajectory of your entire idea. Um, if you're at that stage and it might change the trajectory of who you hire um, or when you decide to take on capital. So I certainly would say mentorship is key. Start early. That that's great advice. Having been through accelerators, having run accelerators, having helped start new accelerators, <laughs> uh, I, I I fully uh, agree with that. And 
one of the th neat things I love about Northwest Arkansas and, and Bentonville and Northwest Arkansas is the wide breadth of entrepreneurial support organizations that we have here in, in many places. I don't think you get sort of the full scale, right? If it's everything from idea stage through scale uh, and, you know, not to be forgotten, the businesses we drive by every mm -hmm. day, there's even accelerators for them. Um, what's the most interesting thing that you've ever learned from an entrepreneur? I think patience. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a recurring theme that I think I've heard from entrepreneurs um, and <laughs> that I'm still learning myself. <laughs> yeah. That, that to me is, it's, a very interesting uh, one. Um, I, I like to tell people I'm impatiently patient, yeah. uh, and, and I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs are that way. So when you said Absolutely. patience, it made me giggle because I thought, where's she going with this? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's all she wrote. Yeah. Excellent. Well, before I hit you with my last question, at this point, what should I have asked you that I did not ask? I don't know. This was pretty thorough. I think I think you hit on all the all the right topics. So. Okay. Well, one awesome. last question as okay. promised. Awesome. Tell me a story. And the story I'm looking for is what you would call a hashtag because Bentonville story. <laughs> uh, something that could only happen here or maybe represents it's the uniqueness or the essence of Bentonville. Okay. Um, I think I have one in mind, although it's not particularly entrepreneurial related, uh, if that Oh, is, that's totally okay. fine. Okay. Yeah. I've got um, a few of those. Well, I think that my, because Bentonville story would have to be, um, about, I guess two years ago. So pretty soon after I moved here, I had a friend who, uh, asked me if I would like to go mountain biking and I thought it would be a good idea to just get on out there, you know? I mean, what's worse than just going for it, right? Don't mm -hmm. contact Women of Oz. Don't, you know, use all the resources that we have available to teach you how to ride a mountain bike. Just get out there. So I did, and uh, we read, we we uh, rode on greens and blues for a while, which was, you know, probably my comfort level. And about, I don't know, three hours after riding, which is probably way too long, as I learned uh -huh. to be on your first mountain biking experience ever, uh, I totally flipped over the handlebars and uh, partially, I think, cracked the helmet a little bit and um, very terrifying, you know, got back up on the bike and drove immediately to Yayo's for a margarita and a burrito. And that to me is a hashtag Bentonville because Bentonville moment, you know, like that's like, <laughs> That's the essence, essence of, I think, just accepting that we love our sports here. We love cycling. And sometimes we fall off a bike. We're going to get back up. And I guess that could also be entrepreneurial as well. <laughs> a absolutely. Um, oh, my goodness. Well, I, too, have figured out how to go over the bars. And not too long after I started riding, and I couldn't sleep on my right side for two months. And oh. I wish I had gone to Yayo's to have a margarita <laughs> and some of their amazing food. Uh Yayo, speaking of which, was just named by, I believe it was the New York Times. Yes, as I one saw of the, that. Yeah, as one of the top 50 restaurants uh, in America to try out right yeah, now. Amazing. They just keep getting yeah. accolade after accolade. In fact, they're one of um, the three, um, gosh, what's the what's the award that uh, restaurants... Um, Oh, I'm not going to know this. It slips my mind right now that we, we had, th oh, uh, James Beard uh, semifinalist. Oh, oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah, That's amazing. Th yeah. The Hive, Preacher's Son, and Yayo's. How cool is that? All, uh, all in Bentonville. Yeah, I think actually this is this is very this is also a very Because Bentonville story, yeah. uh, which I'll say very briefly here. Sure. But um, the night that I moved into Northwest Arkansas, very first night, unpacking some boxes, need to get some food was thinking about getting a beer somewhere, um, ran into Bike Rack, and I was sitting next to the founder of Yayo's. And it was just this very like sweet, 
precious experience of just, hey, you know, this is welcome to your new neighborhood. And uh, it's very cool to see how much his his uh, group has grown. That's awesome. Yeah, Raphael is really cool. And I, I love everything cool. that that he's doing. Well, Jessica, thank you uh, so much for spending time with our audience today mm -hmm. and for sharing your story and that of uh, Endeavor. And, uh, you know, we're really lucky to have Endeavor here as part of our entrepreneurial support uh, ecosystem. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking about how you have spotted up here and how you're helping as we continue to build on the legacy of Sam Walton and Don Tyson and JB Hunt. And uh, I guess later folks such as Bill Simmons, but I'm thinking about some of the entrepreneurs today that could become part of that uh, family. And so I just I jotted down a few of them to to list for people to watch out for. You've totally. got Charu Thomas of Ox. Oh, yeah. Love Charu. Uh, Carter Malloy, who you mentioned earlier at Acre Trader, killing it. Um, Spencer Jones at Linnaeus Medical. Yeah. April and Stan at Movista. Ayush and Demi at Freight Relay, yep. uh, who I've, you know, Spencer, I mentioned a moment ago, as well as Ayush and Demi. I've known them all since I was in Memphis. Um, and oh heavens, I better not forget April Kenneth Bowman oh, at Stopwatch. Yes. Can't forget her. But and there's so many more that I haven't listed here. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop and take my lumps now for the <laughs> ones who are going to surely wonder why I didn't mention them. Uh so thank you again. Yeah, really thank you. It. Thank this you, James. Fun. It's been a pleasure to uh be on the show and get to join your audience on this journey. Hey, and thank you to our Bentonville Beacon audience. Uh, without you, this show would not be possible. And in order to continue to the show's success, I have uh, two requests from you. Neither one are for money, but I suppose we'll take that as well if you'd like to send it. Uh, first, I'd like it if you could take a moment to share the show on social media or in a text or email to a friend who you think ought to see it. And second, as always, come back again to learn more about Bentonville and Northwest Arkansas, where you can have more of what you want and less of what you don't. Check out BentonvilleEconomicDevelopment.com to see all these episodes and to learn more and hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcast player. Thanks and see you next time.